we're going to go ahead and get started. People are still coming in more than originally registered. So that's interesting. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get started so that we can maximize your time. And um, let me just get this going. This is going to be recorded, but it's only for our use and your faces and voices won't appear unless your voice might if you speak out, but I hope that's not an issue. Um, so I welcome everyone's participation. A little bit about me for those of you who haven't been with me before. Um, I am Susan Mazarski. I have been many things, but among them I've worked at MIT um, as an IT person. I'm also an instructional and technical consultant in schools. I've written curricula in math and ELA. Uh, I've been over, I've been an educator over 20 years in basically all the settings you can imagine. In fact, I'm going down to St. Croix um, in the end of this month to consult in schools down there where I've consulted in both public and private. <clears throat> Your mic is working again. I heard you. Mr. Malunga. It is? Yeah, we can hear you now. What's your first name? Awesome. Can you say Molly your... C. What is it? Molly C? Say it again. Molly C, yes. Molly C. I'll try. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, thank that, you. That, that's all you could do? Molly C. I, uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not practiced. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna move on. I got it. I got it. <laughs> we're gonna move on um, to finding out more about you. Now, um, I recognize a lot of names, but I also don't recognize a lot of names. So, and of course, if I saw your face before, it's easier for me to remember you. So, if you want, um, in the chat, I would love to hear from you. Um, grade subject you teach and something you were successful in today or yesterday. Like I wrote this originally for like a Monday afternoon um, session. So, you know, think to your classroom, something that you were successful in. And um, we're gonna launch a Zoom poll in a minute about attendance. Now, I'd also like to hear if you were here for the first session, just if you wanna throw that into the chat too, that so I get a sense of who was here. I didn't get a chance to study the registration reports too much other than looking at the numbers. I rec like I said, I recognize some names, but got a lot of people here. Okay. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Tizra. Diana. Ah, oh, it's Oli. Miss Olisi is, um, so he does what I used to do. Okay, thank you, Karen. Oh, successful field trip. Ooh, that's a challenge with kindergartners. Awesome. <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's great. Successful making the coffee. I love it. <laughs> oh. oh, that's great. And if you were successful in not spilling it all over yourself, then um, <laughs> you're even better off. <laughs> I'm speaking for myself as Spiller. Okay. Oh, Maria, which one did you register for? Um, if you want, you can email admin at solvedconsulting. I'm going to put this as a message to you. Um, and then if you want to, you can get the correct link and then Okay, so Maria, that, that was the first session. We just did that session this morning. And this is in the same band of courses. Like we have multiple courses that we're offering and TAIL is, includes the, the um, assessment course, which we did first session this morning. So if you missed it, we're going to be repeating that cycle of TAIL courses starting either next week or the week after, I forget which. Um, and then we also have options and we'll be going into this later. I'm gonna just get into the correct place. CTL courses you can take 
asynchronous or asynchronous. So if you wanted, to, okay, it's fine. I'll, I'll stop talking. <laughs> Let's move on. Oh yeah, the Zoom poll. Let me do that. So this is just to get a sense of um, who's with us today and how much experience you have with the tail courses. So how many have you attended and what kind is the first question. And the second question is, which tail courses have you taken? Now, if you're new to this, um, then go ahead and choose NA if you, if you haven't done any of them. <laughs> Rescheduling, then there's a way. That can be hard, that's good, okay. Thank you, Chanel, great. Okay, wow, Orton Gilliam. Ooh, Karen, that sounds amazing. The poll disappeared for you? Did you fill it in, Anthony, for Tony? If 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 not, don't worry about it. It's not like I'm just sort of getting a sense. Tony, okay, got it. Okay. So so far from the feedback, it looks like most of us are in our first course. <laughs> You're awesome. Congratulations. I am very happy. I'm so I, I zoom issues can be the worst because you're really looking forward to it. Okay. Alrighty. So about 25% of us have been in TLT, some of them this morning. Um, some of us have been to tail F or taken tail F. Um, some of us let's see. See if we can get a couple more people to do the poll. Yeah, good. We got more coming in. So far, it's a little over half. Who? Uh, Where do I do that? Oh, it should have popped up. If it didn't pop up for you, don't worry about it. Um, I'm just trying to get a, a sense in general about who's with us and their experience because it helps me modify how I present. Like if most people are new, then I'll say more about certain things. Um, if they're not, then I'll skip those parts. It's formative assessment. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead. We've had 25 um, people respond, um, which is over half. It's about 68%. I'm going to go ahead and end that and share the results with you. So as you can see, a um, little over half first time. Then we have a variety of how people have taken the courses and a variety of courses taken with the greatest number having taken tail D. Okay. After this, this afternoon, we'll also have tail F as the final session for the day in here, but we have a, a number of different courses as well. But let me get into the actual content so we can get started and have a good session. So norms for the day, we're going to use first names. Uh, we talked about that already if you were here. Um, the request is to be present because I know there are many distractions, but luckily, hopefully fewer today um, than if you were like in a Monday PD. <laughs> uh, we're going to listen to all voices. We're going to start it and on time. That's my commitment to you. We're going to approach this with an increased stance where we're all going to be prepared to learn take responsible responsibility for impact. So that particularly goes for me. If I say or do something wrong, you know, please let me know. I really take your feedback very seriously. Or if you like what I did, I mean, there's always positive impacts too. And grounding statements and evidence. That doesn't mean research papers. I am going to be coming more from that evidence-based, data-based perspective, but your experience is also evidence. Okay, so we're in course E of the six part course of teaching across learning environments. And these are funded by NYSED. Um, so these are all free to you and there's a free CTLE for each one. Um, you can sign up for as many as you want and you'll get your certificate after you've completed the course and sent in the survey. So looking at what are our questions for this um, session, 
Good morning to everyone. This is great that people are still sending in introductions. Thank you so much. Um, so what are we look what are we looking at today? What do safe and supportive learning environments look across the different environments we might encounter in this day and age? How can we sustain those safe and supportive learning environments across our teaching modalities? And then our objectives are going to be looking at the four priorities that guide um, equity-centered and trauma-informed teaching, and then look at ways to sustain these practices across the teaching year. Because we all have experience, we've been to a PD, or we've come back from the summer, and we're all inspired, and we're all geared up, and we try something, and then life gets hard, life gets tiring, or we get sick, or whatever, and it slips away. And we were like, well, we, we did that before, but we, for, we let it go, we let it slide. So how do we make sure that, that we are able to sustain things? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to share with you the note catcher. And um, what this is, is um, it's a document putting in the chat. Um, okay, I heard from Cynthia that she never got credit and um i will tell you that we have had some issues with the email system especially doe emails if you did take a course and you filled out the survey and everything else please contact our admin at solvedconsulting.com they handle all our ctle issues and they'll be able to look up your attendance and fix you know send you your certificate okay so apologies for that but we'll fix it Okay, so I just pasted the note catcher in the, in the chat. Last time we had a wonderful volunteer who was willing to paste it in because we keep getting new people in um, and that allows me to stay focused on you all and not keep pasting it. But um, so do we have a volunteer this time to maybe help out with that? Uh, the note catcher is gonna happen when you click on the link, it's gonna force you to make a copy um, and it'll save in your Google Drive. So that'll be your own copy of the note catcher. Nobody else will see it. It's just your place to keep notes. Um, we have, um, this is what it looks like. So we're gonna be going through some key terms and context. We're going to be looking at one activity. Uh, we're gonna look at the four constants and then a second activity and a third activity. And the final, and then we have a spare page that we shouldn't have. You can just delete that. And then we have a final page with some additional stuff. So that's the note catcher. Um, and I can continue pasting it if it's not in someone's wheelhouse to do that with, with me. Okay, let's take a look at our key terms. The first one is equity centered teaching. And again, once you have the note catcher up and open, you can take notes in here if you like. So the first one is the equity centered teacher teaching, rather. And this is where all students are given the tools they need to achieve academic success. And they're re respected and included regardless of their background or abilities. Every single individual is celebrated for their talents and abilities. Now, the second key term is um, well, it's, we're still on the equity-centered teaching, but if we have trauma-informed teaching within that, it fosters a sense of stability for students. It cultivates their self-worth and helps them improve their focus and regulate their feelings. Self-regulation, as we know, is one of the biggest challenges for many students and many adults for that matter. <laughs> So we need to think about, as educators, how trauma can shape the way students experience the classroom. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna say, if you were educated in 2020 or since, or educating, I should say, if you were an educator since 2020, you've been through trauma as well, okay? So we need, being trauma-informed can help ourselves as well. I'm just going to mention one thing at this point. Um, there, if you want to keep notes, um, you don't need to copy or take screenshots of the slides. You'll get a full copy of the slideshow after the session, okay? Now, how can we 
connect trauma-informed teaching to equity-centered teaching? Well, when we think about trauma-informed teaching, look, there's a lot of words on this slide, but I'm gonna come from a little personal experience. Trauma often informs loss in one form or another. And traditional kind of behavior management, whether it's parenting or teaching or whatever, tends to focus on taking things away. Many tra traumatized people or youths have had everything taken away anyway, including control. So that doesn't, it's not effective. It doesn't help. It doesn't do what we want it to do. <clears throat> so part of what trauma-informed teaching can do is help us change our practicing. Um, Tony, thank you for the citation. Um, we are we have citations in the background on our slides, uh, but we don't go into um, we don't go into the academic citations necessarily because the focus is on the content. But thank you for giving us that reference. Um, I will give that feedback to the slide creation team, and we can add those notes to the slides in the future. Okay, thank you for the feedback. Okay, so yeah, thank you. you you're right. It, it is important where people, that pe and I, I really appreciate that contribution. So if you haven't seen the, the chat, it's Alex Chevron, Ven I'm not sure it's Venet or Venet. Um, these are frameworks for understanding trauma informed teaching and equity centered teaching. So if you want to learn more outside of this short one hour course, you can follow up. Vinette, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, great. But uh, what I'm speaking about is my experience as a um, a therapeutic foster parent. Um, I'm not going on the slide right now. This is this is actually a different framework, which is to do with when there's a great deal of loss, um, students won't respond to things being taken away. So we need to find different trauma-informed approaches to help our student classroom environment be safe and respectful. Okay. So these are some things that these environments require. One is trusting, caring, and responsive relationships, creating safe and predictable environments for students, using inquiry to identify patterns of behavior, and possible triggers, and using positive behavior supports and SEL strategies. Now, the first activity that we're having now is um, in our note catcher. I'd like you to take a moment to describe your own relationship to the trauma-informed classroom. Maybe you've had a lot of training. Maybe you've, um, you know, you, you're very aware of framework like Tony is. Maybe like me, you're, you're a therapeutic foster parent or a therapeutic parent in general. Um, and then one of the things I'd like you to do is after that, so we're in the note, oops, wrong link. We're in the note catcher right now. I'd like you to name one to two challenges of sustaining these practices in different learning environments, okay? So go ahead in your note catcher. I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes and in that time, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to stop sharing. So you have a chance to use your own computer, your own notebook, whatever, to have these taking stock moments, okay? Okay, we have some sharing um, that has begun in the chat. Lisa has presented an obstacle. Did it start sharing again? Um, Lisa started um, share, sharing obstacles to, you know, good um, classroom environments, you know, frustrating student behaviors. why why we end up 
sometimes making taking things away. Arnaldo. Hmm. Yeah, Arnaldo is giving some challenging challenges being a cluster teacher. <clears throat> when you have less control over the environment, it's definitely more difficult. Okay. Um, anyone else is welcome to continue to add in <clears throat> as we go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue. So as um, Tony mentioned, these are the four constants across learning environments from Bennett's work. Um, we have connection, empowerment, flexibility, and predictability. Hmm. Very nice, Sharon. That's great. Okay, so we have some great things coming in. So let's talk about the four, you know, the four constants that can really help this help overcome these barriers. The first one is connection. And this one is to do with and in the note catcher, this is where we're defining these four terms. Um, this is the positive influence of trusted relationships on student learning and the essential nature of relationship building in the classroom. And this involves multiple areas teacher to student, student to student, and student to school and community. Hmm, that's so interesting that you say that. I'm just, I'm responding to the chat as I go to. Um, and I, I invite you all to engage with each other in the chat too, if you have thoughts or ideas or come off mute and respond if you have some things to speak about. So let's talk about these different relationships. All students should benefit from a trusting, caring, and respectful relationship with their teachers, right? We, we know that. Think back to your own teaching teachers and who you trusted and respected and who didn't, and who trusted and respected you and who didn't, right? Particularly students who had trauma, they need you, the school may be their only haven. They may be for whatever reason, we have a lot of migrant students now. We have a lot of students who have survived very difficult traumas, some students who are in foster homes, all kinds of things, right? They really need those trusted and caring relationships. And that, you know, they can be in one class. It doesn't have to be the homeroom or the, uh, the full-time teacher. It's always, you know, I don't know what the, there's that kind of, notion is that all it takes is one trusted adult relationship and that can save a, a child's life. Then teacher to student connection, we can pri prioritize these connections by investing in relationships with and between students, mindfully offering positive rather than neutral support and encouragement and offering check-in opportunities daily. Now I want to focus on this for a moment, student to student connection. I want as a personal story, when I was in fifth grade, hmm, I get that, Tony, I get that. Oh my God, that's horrible. Um, so when I was 10 years old, my dad got a, my dad who's a professor, got a fellowship to study in England and took my sister and me from Denver to England for a year, you know, school year. And um, it was a huge change in a lot of ways. Um, we were placed into the school, which was so different from where we were from. And I did not like it. I was making all kinds of comparisons to where I come from that were not positive. <laughs> so I was pretty shut down. I was shut down and, and not enjoying myself. And um, I had the best teacher. She was just so great. And not only did she establish a relationship with me on like the first or second day of school, after observing me and seeing how I was just sort of withdrawn and on my own, she identified two students she thought I would have a great relationship with. And I maintained relationships with both of those, friendships with both of those um, for the whole school year and then way beyond with one of them. 
in fact, our whole families became friends and we would intervisit even when I was in high school and so on. So it became like this long term thing that I don't know if it would have happened on its own without her intervention. So there's so many ways that we can provide the opportunity for um, life improvement for our students by promoting student to student connection. So speaking, I don't know, someone said that they had success this morning um, with uh, making coffee and I made a joke about spilling it. Well, guess what I just did? <laughs> I got to save my devices while we're talking. Anyway, so that's what I'm saying. Like it, they, those can be life-saving in the long term. So how can we foster student connections across learning environments? Well, be, besides, you know, in classroom opportunities to learn together, which is the collaboration and problem solving, we can mindfully implement our discussion boards to promote um, student positive student to student interaction. Um, we can embed social interactions throughout the class, not just learning based, but an opportunity to integrate learning and um, enjoyment, fun, interest, um, delight. And um, we can, um, you know, make sure that our expectations are extremely clear and our norms are extremely clear to avoid and, and prevent some of the big um, downfalls of all of this. You know, because we know bullying, cyberbullying, all of this is a huge issue, especially with older kids who have devices. So how do we prevent that? And part of that is through our classroom environment. So let's take a moment and start activity two, which is um, ways to sustain connections. And let's think for a minute about what are some ways that you know of to sustain connections and what are some ways to repair broken connections? And I'm going to, again, go silent for two minutes, take off the screen and put the questions in the chat for you to reflect and add to your note catcher. We have some great comments happening in the chat right now. <clears throat> oh, wow. I can tell we have quite a group of compassionate and connected teachers here. Yeah, communication is key for sure on all levels, whether collegial or with students. Um, yeah, thank you. I, we have some great participation here. Um, bridging. Yes, parent involvement is a must. Yeah, <clears throat> Tanya, we are going to in tail F, we're going to talk about the place of parent involvement in, in this as well. Fantastic. So keep it up. Keep going. You guys are doing great with your participation and adding in. You, you have a lot to contribute. Thank you so much. So going into this is one framework for sustaining connections Okay, that we're going to go into now. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, so one of the ways that we can sustain connections is using the last approach. And this um, can be through, you know, adult to adult, whether it's, you know, colleagues or parents or adults to children, depending on the children, right? We need to figure out how to best implement it. But a lot of you have already said many of these parts. First, if you need to sustain connections or repair broken connections, listen to each other. <clears throat> Don't try and fix it if there's a problem try to understand. The second part is apologize. Developing an ecology of self-accountability creates safety. The next one is solve. Real problems don't just go away, work together to, um, to find solutions. Um, and thank each other, a classroom with gratitude, which someone mentioned earlier, is a positive one. Okay, I'm going to paste in because I know this group wants citations. I'm put, putting in a, in a, oh, that is not the right um, link. I don't know why it did that. Um, let me put in the right link to, here we go. That's a link to more about last. 
if you're interested in following up with that. Oh, no. Thank you. I shared wrong. <laughs> okay, let me go back to the thing. Okay. Better? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. The solution, not your the problem. Okay. I love this, uh, Diane. I I love these ideas. These are excellent. Okay, so we're gonna listen to student voices right now, speaking about the importance of trust. Um, this is <clears throat> So just to, since we, I think we have everyone who's going to join us today, I'm just going to mention that in the end of your note catcher, you have a copy of the slideshow. So don't worry too much about taking the notes um, and you will have also the link to this video. So I'm going to share, make sure that I uh, do this with sound and let me know if you can't hear it when I start sharing. Okay, this is not long, it's um, two minutes long. If I'm in a class and I know like me and the teacher don't really like connect when they when they call me I sort of get that like feeling like if they if they're asking a question and they like call on me like oh Eddie like answer this question like I get that oh like like that nervous feeling but like if I'm with the teacher that's like that I have a good connection with like I'm I'll feel like like free to answer like with with no hesitation or anything being able to like talk to your teachers or having that trust factor with different teachers or different students is like it's a good feeling because when you don't have them on the outside you know okay I can come to school and I can get these resources or I can get the help or I can talk to this teacher or this person and it makes you feel good and know that you have support. I think the relationship with our teachers are super important and I have um, a relationship with a lot of my teachers this year and I think it's super important because like it makes you want to go to that class. It makes you want to learn, and it like kind of helps you take in what you're hearing from them like a lot more because you like respect that person a lot more. We're basically like just a community of people, and like that's how we like that's how we function. Like that's the dy dynamic around here. You know what I mean? Like there's no like really there's no discriminatory like it's just you know like we all get along basically. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter like what race you are. It doesn't none of that matters. Extracurricular activities, for example, like that really helps you build like a closer bond like with the students in the school. Like I do cheerleading, so you know, it's definitely like fun like seeing some of the girls, you know, outside of practice and like, oh, we intern, like, hey girl, what's up? Students do better if they're connected to, to a community. And they also do better when they have relationships with people in the building. So as we can see, you know, some of this confirmed what a lot of you were saying, including, you know, Ryan's note about coaching and having those outside of classroom relationships or just generally feeling like there's there's a sense of respect and trust in um, in the classroom. Um, I'm going to move on to this. OK. Would someone like someone besides me like to read out this uh, APA quote? Teachers who foster positive relationships with their students create classroom environments more conducive to learning and meet students' developmental, emotional, and academic needs. Beautifully and clearly read. Thank you so much, Nadine. So, as I said in the last situation, uh, the last session, I like to do little 
no stakes. It's like low stakes, no stakes quizzes, anonymous. No, you know, there's nothing in it that's evaluative in any way. And what it, the purpose of this is to make sure that we're interrupting the process of forgetting, which is a natural part of learning. You know, we learn, we take in a lot of information, we don't retain all of it, even usually it's just a, a fraction. So one of the ways that we can increase the amount of retention is through low stakes, um, frequent quizzing that, you know, again, has no connection to grades or anything else, but just allows a student or a person to assess for themselves how well they're retaining or understanding the material and allows the instructor to understand that as well. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to launch a mini quiz. Um, and again, it's just part of the reason that I'm, shoot, let me see, did I, I'm, I don't, this is odd. I'm going to stop. Oh, that's why. Okay. Um, so here it is. Here's our quiz. Um, and just with the question is, which one of these is not part of the last approach? And if you notice, there's some time that has passed since we talked about the last approach. Um, and this is, makes it effortful retention, meaning that you have to think a little harder which actually helps to grow neural connections in your brain. So effortful retention, effortful, uh, there's another word that goes with that, I'm not remembering. And this for our citation-based people is from uh, Peter C. Brown's book, um, Make It Stick. So if you're, you struggle with the fact that your students don't retain knowledge, this is a great book for that. We've got the popcorn popping. We got a lot of responses coming in. Remember, this the question is which of these is not part of the last approach. Okay, so about sixty percent of you have participated. Um, I'm going to put the name of the book into the chats. Um, so it sticks. <laughs> okay. All righty. So we have still 61%. I guess the popcorn has stopped. So we're going to end the poll and we're going to take a look. What was the correct answer? Um, the correct answer, which is the one that does not appear in last, is argue, right? Who remembers what the A word was? Apologize or something? Okay, let's. So what we do when when um, we need to go back is we literally go back. Okay, so here's our slide. Yes. Right? So again, it's not a focus on the right answer. It's, oh, what's our retention? So apologize is the correct A. Thank you so much. Argue is not part of sustaining the connections, right? So great. You did a great job. And for those who forgot, you've got a chance to interrupt that forgetting. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other pillars of um, equity-based classrooms. Empowerment, allowing students to consistently have a voice and a choice in the learning process. Um, knowing that you're there to acknowledge and listen to them all the time. When you give them more control, remember we talked about trauma often involves loss of control. When you give them a chance to make certain choices, um, then that's empowering and that can create a greater sense of self and security. My foster daughter, when I first got her, I asked her to choose something. Uh, I think I asked her what she wanted to call me. And she had no idea. And her therapist pointed out 
that no one had ever asked her what she wanted in her life and she was almost 18 years old. So she didn't know how to make choices. Uh, the link for classwork and slides. Okay, so that, um, do you want uh, the note catcher? I can reshare the note catcher link. Um, let me find it. Um, I'm gonna have to do it from here, hold on. Thank you for your patience, everyone. We wanna make sure everyone gets a chance to learn. So let me make sure everyone gets a chance to have this. Okay. I just, I just put it in there for you. Thank you, Karen, I appreciate it. Okay, great, okay. Um, moving on, we have another way to empowering besides authentic choices, modeling consent, practicing and modeling consent and minimizing compliance for compliance sake. Yes, students need compliance, but they need to know why. You're having a fire drill or another kind of drill, lockdown, whatever, and they need to know why. Why is it important that they're quiet in the halls? Why is it important? You know, they usually know why for lockdown drills, but unfortunately, as part of our traumatic environment these days. But it's not just because we said so. Flexibility, I believe that's our last one. Um, we're offering increased learning options and maintaining space for unanticipated issues, right? This is the opposite of a rigid structure. It's the, op the structure that offers security and predictability without um, inflexibility, right? We can still, we always have a good, a good solid teacher has plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E in the back of our minds in case and for when everything goes wrong. So part of this is our learning environment. If we have the budget and the permission, then being able to design a flexible space is wonderful. Being able to change our schedule for tasks, our scheduling, our student grouping. Um, when I was in the classroom full time, I used to pair up my students uh, or I used to group my students in different ways. Now I. We, I had a very difficult set of social dynamics in one of my classes. The first class I taught actually at this particular school, um, they had the two classes separated <laughs> up until that year because they were so difficult. And so um, I got them when they were merged for the first time since kindergarten. Um, so we had all kinds of drama all the time. And we had a lot of serious learning issues and, and emotional issues and puberty onsetting and a whole mix of stuff. So in order to, one of the things I did was we had different seating arrangements every month. Um, and I would go from twos, threes, fours, like I would do, I would change it up. And for a student who was very introverted and preferred to learn on their own, I would sometimes allow them to be on their own. But I would say to the ones who, protested and being grouped with so and so you know I would I didn't do any too explosive or non productive groupings, but I made sure for those who were maybe a little uncomfortable working with other students to make sure they understood it was temporary. And I just wanted them to learn to start to get along and it was a. It was a successful process in the end because of the relationships that we developed and the conflict resolutions that we implemented. Um, it can be a key strategy for meeting students where they are and fostering a sense of connection. It's especially important for students who have experienced trauma. If your lesson isn't going the way you want it to, I'm just gonna give an example of math class because I taught math for many years in a middle school. Um, so uh, Han, I will say the, the deal with the note catcher is that, oh, I see. Let me paste my link in because it'll force you to make a copy. I think Karen's link is her copy. So just- um, Oh, sorry about that. I forgot uh, I made a copy. It, it's totally fine. So this is my copy um, and it'll force you to make a copy in your own drive. So back to my story real quick. Um, what I would always do is like, you know, sometimes there are days that you just, you can't teach no matter, you know, your plan just won't go <laughs> because 
the students just came back from a field trip or there was a lockdown drill or the weather is just not cooperating or too many teachers are out sick or too many students are out sick, whatever the reason. I would always have certain activities in my back pocket that would promote learning, but also be not your regular. So for example, I would have fraction jacks, which is a set of jumping jacks that are designed to reinforce the use of fractions. And we would play games with those, or we would do uh, movement counting games, skip counting games. We would do um, uh, mental math activities, all kinds of ways to engage them out of the ordinary on the days when sit down learning just wasn't going to work and I did not want to fight with them. Trauma responses like dissociation or the inability to listen can be mistaken for behavioral issues. They need flexibility, students do, so they can deal with their trauma responses as they occur. One school I was co coaching at last year had counselor offices um, on two different floors. And the students, when they were really having a hard time, were able to just voluntarily go there um, and, and seek counseling. Now, a few elements of flexibility. You adjust targets, approaches, and schedules to ensure opportunities for success for all students. You allow multiple paths towards learning and multiple ways of demonstrating learning and over avoid overly rigid expectations. And the, actually, this is the last one, pre predictability. This is consistent instructional routines. It doesn't mean always do the same thing every day. It means we introduce a number of different types of routines at the start of the year. And so the students are ready when they hear a specific routine to adopt that routine. So for example, okay, time for a turn and talk. Everyone turn to your partner, partner A speak, partner B speak, da 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 da. You have that as a routine. It's something they can predict. They know it's how it's supposed to go. It's safe, but maybe it's not a good day for a turn and talk. Now, so let's do partners of four. Okay, let's do individual work. You know, you have your certain, you, let's make posters and do a gallery walk. You have your routines and the students know what to expect. But you can be flexible with them. <laughs> That's the balance. Um, trauma can create hyper, um, what is the word? Who knows this word? It's um, not hyperactive. It's like when you're too on alert all the time. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, when you're hyper something, okay, maybe the word will come back to me in a minute. Not hyper focus. It's, it's when hyper vigilant, hyper vigilance. When you're, uh, when you have kids, especially with CPTSD, they're in a state of hyper vigilance almost all the time. Uh, any little thing can trigger, trigger them things that seem really minor to you. But to them, their fight or flight is active like all the time because they never knew how to predict where trauma would come from. So as we are building trauma routines, trauma informed routines into our classroom, some of the ways that we can dress them are through routines to make normality, responding in predictable ways. And sometimes those predictable ways aren't what they would normally expect. It might be a sense of humor when they are being ridiculous or being harsh. So they don't expect that and catches them off guard. They don't have their escalation. Planning ahead in order to respond to disruption or dysregulation. One more quick Zoom quiz, and then we're going to wind up our day or our morning. Okay. According to this workshop, which statement is true? Flexibility is more important than predictability because we never know what might happen. Predictability is more important than flexibility because students need structure to thrive or they're both as important as each other. So as you fill out, I'm just gonna go into the next slide, which is we are going to do this on our own. Which of the four co constants do you struggle with sustaining the most as an educator? Think about one or two practices or constants you'd like to implement that pr prioritize the one you chose. And then if you want, if you have time, go ahead and share your thoughts and responses from this. Otherwise, just keep it in your note catcher and um, 
that's your reflection to take away from this session. This, this particular tale usually goes much quicker than this one, but we had such great participation from you all. That I, <laughs> I'm kind of having to rush a little bit at the end. I apologize that we don't have enough time to deeply go into this activity. Um, now, that's our wrap up there. As we get into this last one, um, we're going to just say that you can go to get more CTLE credits through scanning one of these, which is also that last page in your note catcher. There's also, you can go st straight to the solved website, go to the CTLE courses. And what you would do is you choose, um, you, sorry, go down to, where is it? How to sign up, choose a course. Uh, I'm not, I don't know why. Oh, here it is. <laughs> choose synchronous or asynchronous, and then you'll see other courses. So I'm going to just choose synchronous for the moment, and you can sign up there. Okay. So I'm going to end the poll now. We had 32 of you respond, and this is our situation. And it is that both of them are equally important. Actually, all four are equally important. Thank you so much. You got, you did amazing. Um, yes, we're getting to the survey right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in order to get your CTLE, um, oh yeah, and I have to say six, uh, six referrals with your code and you get a $50 Amazon card. And now let me give you your survey um, and put it in the chat. Yeah, there's one more this afternoon, but it, it starts at 12 at uh, 1 p.m. Okay, so we have a break of an hour and a half for lunch. There's the survey. Um, and then you can reach out to us, either reach out to me by email, I'm very happy to hear from you. Or if you have CTLE issues, please feel free to email admin solved. And as I mentioned before, the whole slideshow is in your note catcher on the last page, just click on there to open it up. Okay, so thank you so much, you guys were absolutely amazing. Um, I'm really happy to see you all and have your excellent. Um, Sharon, were you supposed to take this in a certain order? Mm. Well, they are designed for a certain order, but you don't have to take them in any particular order. Um, there is I, never some... took, I never took A, so I just saw this is letter E, so that's why I didn't know if it mattered. Well, they, they build on each other a little bit, but they are also, you know, very valuable individually. They, they don't have a lot of overlap. Um, I will say that we are offering a new round of tail courses starting again. I don't know if it's next week or the week after I have to look at that schedule, but then we also have the asynchronous if you wanna go back to the beginning. So however you choose, you can just jump right on the train whenever you like. Okay, thanks. That was my next question. So I'll just go backwards. Yeah, anytime. And, and also we have all the other courses as well, the ELL, the Students with Disabilities, the parent connections, all of these other courses that are available too, each of which has six sections. So lots of CTLE opportunities um, and all are free. So thank you so much for everyone. We're officially over now. Um, hang on if you'd like to ask a question or talk um, and or email me and I'm really happy to meet you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karen, I appreciate the feedback. Thank you, Tanya. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> hey. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Edward. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Tony, come. Uh, if you want to stay in, and talk, I would love to, to chat with you. Thank you, Lyrica. Thank you, Rosa. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. You too.